year gone? Where has everything gone? Today is the last Wednesday of the year. Can you imagine? Tomorrow is New Year's Eve. Wow. Tomorrow is New Year's Eve. Now, just to kind of get everybody up to snuff, tomorrow morning we have Mr. Um, uh, oh, gosh, my mind is going crazy right now. Uh, Mr. 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 Dean Torelli, and we're done for the year until Monday. Is everybody clear? Tomorrow, <clears throat> tomorrow is the last call of the day of the year. Tomorrow is the last call. Tomorrow morning at nine o'clock until January the fourth, Monday, Monday. So just get everybody straight, and we're going to kick the year off with a young lady who's actually just realized she did the last two Januarys to kick us off in a row. This will be our second. January kicking us off in a row. What a blessing. Uh, well, let's get started here. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much. Happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas and happy, 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 a uh, happy, 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 a uh, happy, 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 happy 2021. Ms. Harold Gaston, thank you for much for joining us this morning. Miss Kathleen Williams, I like that red top on you, young lad. That's beautiful. Mr. Dale Ranson, good morning, sir. He's got a red top on. No, he's got blue on today. Hey, Mr. Sean uh, 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 Jordan Shea, good morning. Uh, Mr. Payon over in oh, over in uh, Japan. Thank you so much. Ms. Zoe Duffy, part of the Baker organization. Mr. Lance Kelly, sir, good morning. How are you doing, Mr. Kelly? Thank you for being on the call today. Uh, Miss Luana Pinedo, thank you for joining the call today. Uh oh, what happened here? Thank you for joining the call today. Miss Pat Robinson, I like that white top on you. Look good in that young lady. Makes you look real nice. Uh, and nice earrings too. Look at you, where you going? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, sensational in Florida. Hold on y'all, you know I gotta look at her glasses. You know I gotta flip. Oh, there she is. She got the brown ones on today. Yeah, Miss Lynn. Look at Miss B Belinda Batiste. Look at her with it. look at, so. <laughs> oh, Caroline Baker, good morning. Hey. Thank you so much, Ms. Caroline Baker. Mr. Chris McDowell, thank you so much. Get money, whoever you are. I hope you get some. What they say in the hood, get that money. <laughs> can I be silly a little bit? I tell you what, life's good. Hey, anytime you can make it this far in life and God has blessed you with great people like yourselves and great organization. And I, I and I want to thank everybody that sent me a card out. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Ms. Caroline Baker, God, God bless you. Thank you been on the call this morning. Uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Marcia Carter, good morning. Mr. Marcus, good morning. Um, Marvin Carter, regional director, good morning, sir. Ms. Nat Natasha Ismail, good morning, young lady. Thank you so much for who you are and what you are. Mr. Bill Bailey, good morning, sir. And Mr. Uh, Bill Howard, like those bills back to back. Bill Howard, Bill Bailey, thank you. Mr. Ryan Aswallow up in Sacramento, California, good morning. Ms. Walker, thank you so much. TJ in Ohio, good morning. David Wright, good morning, sir. Sam Foster down there with the TD Jakes Ministries, good morning. And you had a good month bringing some, a lot of ideals in. Keep up the good work, sir. Corey Alexander, good morning in Fresno. Ms. Uh, Christina, good morning so much. Mr. Freddie Sherman, good morning. T. Hayes, good morning. Hope, H O P E. Helping other people excel. Good morning, whoever hope is out there. I love hope. Miss uh, Anna Inez out in Texas. Good morning, young lady. Miss Konohara over in Japan. Thank you so much. That lady, can we give her a hand? She has just grown so much this year, leaps and bounds. Beautiful lady, just a good spirit and just spirit. You know, she takes all our stuff and put it over in, in, the, in the Korean language, I mean, the Japanese language so people can understand. I love it. I love it. See, that's what leaders do. They see a need, they just jump into it, don't have to ask questions, they just make it happen. Mr. Dale Ranson, I already said good morning. Him, Mr. Harris, uh, Harris Mills, good morning, sir. Uh, Miss Marcia Carter, good morning. Miss Martina Martinez out in Iowa, Iowa. Population of her town, she said is 2,500. She said you hit the stop sign, it says stop, the other side says goodbye. Thank you for being on the call this morning. Miss Eileen, <laughs> I'm being silly today. I know, it's, hey, can I be silly a little bit sometime? Wow, that makes make me more human. Miss Eileen in San Diego, good morning. Miss um, uh, uh, Celia of Woodland, California, thank you so much. Miss Caroline Baker, thank you so much. And those that are out here a little late, I'm sorry, but I've just got the list of those who got here early. So we have a great call lined up. This young man is going to be the youngest senior vice president Asian ever seen. He's on track to pop two two new RVPs, probably first part of the, of, of, of uh, next year. He's excited. He just moved from Baltimore, Maryland, all the way down to Houston, Texas. He's going back and forth, back and forth. I love his stories. He's got so much story, so much wisdom for 27 years old. Guy starting with his 20s, working in Applebee's, 
and he wanted more than just be a, be you know be at Applebee's. And he sought out, went to a meeting, got started, never looked back. His leaders. See, this one thing I love about this man, I, I really admire. His upline never had to ask him to do anything. He just he's just a, he just takes off and do it. Just takes off and does it, and, and, and very consistent. And now he's had his organization by letting them start to duplicate. And see, that's the sign of a leader, letting his people duplicate right in front of him, take, his, take himself out of the picture and see what they can do. And you know what? Another good thing, another good point I want to bring up, He, you know, after losing things in Baltimore a couple years ago and building it back up, he says, you know what? I'm going down to Houston, start a fresh new organization. And man, he's blowing it up in Houston. And Houston as a town, I think, what is it, 12 million people in Houston? It's a lot of people down there. So anyway, without further ado, we love him. We, we're grateful for him. And, and we thank him. He'll be back with us again in April. I mean, uh, February. But right now, we're going to close this Wednesday out, the last Wednesday of the year, with none other than the great Mr. Shaquille Cooper, regional hello, vice hello. president, Platinum. Hello. How you doing? Can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored again to be back. You know, it seems like this is like my second family. And, you know, I, it's really great to just, you know, talk to everyone every single week and just be with you guys. And, you know, I hope everyone had a great, you know, holidays and things like that. But, you know, it's about to be 2021 in the next 48 hours, you know, so um, today I did put together a couple slides, you know, I just want to have a conversation, but, you know, I just have a couple slides just so people can kind of see something visual, but I just want to have a real conversation, you know, going into the new year and just talk about mindset, you know, and the type of mindset, you know, that you have to have going into the new decade. Uh, and the reason why, because just think about it, right? If you have the same mindset, you know, in 2020, going into 2021, then you're going to have the same results. So today, you know, we're just going to have a great conversation and I'm just going to speak to you guys from my heart and just share, you know, some of the things that, you know, really impacted me. And I'm going to share a couple of stories also. Um, so it's really great because what I understand is just by hearing other people's stories, you might find something in it that you can relate to and it's going to motivate you to really push to get to where you're trying to go. So as you know, I always like to start off you know, the, the leadership training uh, with a video and that way it kind of gets you prepared uh, for the information. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to play the video. So hold on one second. Here we go. Right. I'm here to talk about success. Arnold. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. I mean, as you know, I was born in 1947 in Austria after the Second World War. So I was very fortunate that I stumbled on my vision. And I didn't really like Austria when I grew up. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker in a factory or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. But that was their vision, not mine. My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. Then one day I went to school. I remember I was 11 years old and they showed a documentary about America. There they showed this documentary, the huge skyscrapers, the high rises, the huge bridges, the six lane freeways, and all of this stuff in the same myself, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be around here with these little farmhouses and these little buildings. I want to be in America. One day after school, I walked by a store in Graz. So I went inside and I looked around and then I saw a magazine. I saw a bodybuilding magazine that had Reg Park on the cover. Reg Park was then a three-time Mr. Universe. And I saw him on the big screen as Hercules. I read that and I said to myself, wow, this is the blueprint for my life. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to become a bodybuilding champion just like Reg Park. I want to get into movies just like Reg Park. And I want to make millions of dollars and be rich and famous, just like Reg Park. You know how great it felt that I knew where I was going? 
Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going, that I'm going to become this bodybuilding champion just like him. So it was just a question of how do you do it? I was so relieved because when you have a goal, when you have a vision, everything becomes easy. So people always ask me when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face. And they told people all the time, I said, because to me, I am shooting for gold. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. Every single set that I do, every repetition, every weight that I lift will get me a step closer to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2,000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. At the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a goal. So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You've got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You've got to have a purpose. Seventy-four percent hate their job in America. Now, there's not much different when you come to Europe. The majority of people don't like what they're doing because they're really not doing it because they didn't have a goal and they followed this goal. They just aimlessly drift around and then all of a sudden if there's a job opening, so they get that job because you have to work. But then when you work, it's a chore. It's work. It's not fun. So if you think about only a quarter of the people really enjoy what they're doing in life, that is unbelievable if you think about it. So I felt so blessed that I knew what I was doing. It's like a medical student that studies and knows he wants to become a doctor. You know where to go. And the same thing is also in politics. I remember that in politics, I had a very clear vision that I will be the leader of California. This is as far as I could go because I was not born in America, so I could not run for president. So being the governor of the fifth largest state, of, I should say the largest state, the fifth largest economy in the world, was for me really the ultimate title, the ultimate accomplishment in politics. So even though people came up to me and said, why don't you go and run for something smaller? You're never going to make it. I ran for governor and then two months later, I became governor of the state of California. Again, because I had a very clear vision what I'm going to do with California. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said, that everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm going to be the one that said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm going to do the same thing now for acting. And of course, I went to college to study English. I studied the accent removal, acting classes, and all of this stuff, 
all day long. I worked and I worked and I worked. And within a short period of time, I made one movie called Hercules in New York, which of course went right into the toilet. But it didn't discourage me. I still had the same vision. And then all of a sudden I did Streets of San Francisco. I did Stay Hungry and Pumping Iron and The Villain. And then all of a sudden I was asked by Dino De Laurentiis and the Universal Studio to star in Conan the Barbarian. And after I did Conan the Barbarian, the director at the press conference said to the press, the director was John Milius. He said to the press, if we wouldn't have had Arnold, we would have had to build one. So think about that. The very body that they said can never be sold because the time is wrong. A few years later, I'm doing Conan the Barbarian and it was the number one hit at the box office when it came out in the summer of 82. Think about that. And the director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, my body became an asset, not a liability. And the same thing was with Terminator. After we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I think the movie wouldn't have worked. So think about that. The body and the accent that they attacked was an asset. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. It's just the reality of it is, is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So this is a very important lesson for all of you. So when someone says, no, this is a stupid idea, you in your mind, you don't have to say it, but in your mind, just say this, of you, you asshole. What do you know? I'm here to so every time I watch that video, uh, it really motivates me. And because just like everything he said in the video, I can agree with everyone on here. We all have people that told us whatever we want to do, it wouldn't work. It's impossible. It can't happen. And all of those different things, people will always tell you what you can do instead of telling you what you can do. And the reason why is because of their limitations. People tend to pour their limitations on you. So what I want to tell everyone on the call today is that in 2021, going into the new year, just stop listening to other people unless they're helping you get to where you're trying to get in life. It don't matter if it's your mom, your grandmother. I don't care if it's your spouse. It don't matter who it is. If that person that you are talking to every single day that you have in your circle of influence, if they're not helping you get to where you need to go, then you need to remove them. And the reason why, because all they will do is continue to pull you down. And like Mr. Schwarzenegger said, he, everything that he tried to do, people told him it wasn't possible. And we can agree that people tell us the same things every single day. And if you look at him today, everyone, they see the success. But if you would have never watched that video, you probably didn't know all of the hard work, all of the persistence, the late nights, the rejections, the sacrifices, the disciplines, the criticism, the doubts, the fears, and the risk that it takes to become successful. Because all people see is the outside. People see the finished product, but they really don't understand the things that you have to go through in order to be successful in life. And everyone have a different journey. But I can tell you that you will have to put in that hard work. You will have to be persistent and you will have to go through those late nights where you're gonna miss time from your family. Think about it, right? You know me, I have a son, he's three years old and I'm always there, but at the same time, I always have to be moving and on the go because I have to produce income in order to help him live the lifestyle that he probably always dreamed about. And the reason why you have to do that, because if you don't sacrifice anything in life, you are just going to live a mediocre life, just like everybody else, which is just get up in the morning, go to a place that you don't like just to pay bills and to do that same thing for the rest of your life. And you really never lived life. You just went along with life. So from there, you never want to listen to the people that tell you that you can't do anything.
You have to have in your mindset that I can do anything. Everything's impossible. Everything that people tell me is impossible. You want to say it is possible. It's all about your mindset. And that's what I want to talk to everyone today is about your mindset. And you got to understand that, listen, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. You know, when people tell me that I'm crazy for the sacrifices and everything that I went through in my past, I look back today and I realize that it was all worth it. If I had the opportunity to do it again, I would do it again because guess what? The things that I've learned made me a better man today at 27 years old. And I'm going to share something with you, a few stories uh, in a few, but it says, listen, when you truly believe in yourself, you don't have to convince others. See, you got to get to a point in your life where you're not trying to convince people to believe in what you believe in. Why do you care what other people think about what you believe in? Because they don't have your eyesight, they don't have your mindset, they can't see your vision. And like I said, it could be your mom, it could be your spouse, it can be your best friend. It don't matter. It do not matter what other people think about your dreams and your vision that you have for yourself and your family. And I'm going to use a couple quick stories, right? So everyone knows about the artist Drake, right? He's one of the top artists in the world, right? But the other day on Instagram, he posted a picture. He said, my uncle found and gifted to me my first earnings from music came a long way from three bills in royalties. In 2007, his first residual check was $304.04. Fast forward 13 years later, he now makes over $70 million a year and he's worth $180 million. But do you know how many people told him when he first came out that you're not supposed to sing and rap at the same time? You got to choose one or you can't do this or you can't do that. But now the guy went from earning $300 in royalties to now earning over $70 million per year. And he's going to continue to make a lot of money for the rest of his life because of the catalog that he put together. But think about the sacrifices. Think about everything that he, he went through to get here, you know, moving from Canada, you know, come to the United States. And if you, if you think about it, right, when you hear some of these stories, people always ask me all the time, you know, why do most people that come from another country and they come to America and they, they seem to become successful, you know, on a faster pace than most of the people that, that lived here and grew up here their whole entire life. And it's because most people don't realize what they have. You know, when you're in America and you have everything given to you, you know, most people tend to complain a lot, but people like myself that came from another country that always had dreams of coming to America. I remember I used to sit, you know, on the stairs and watch the airplanes fly across the sky and say, one day I will be on an airplane and I will be in America. And I remember a few months after that, you know, my mom made a decision where we all moved to America. Me and my other siblings, we all moved to America with literally nothing, starting fresh. So you got to think about it like this. It's no matter where you started, it's all about where you have the vision and where you have the plans to go. And another story, someone like Mark Cuban, if you ever watch Shark Tank, right? But what most people don't know, is that, you know, when Mark Cuban was 27 years old, he, he posted this tweet, he said, it was right around this day in November when I was 27 years old that I remember looking at a $0 bank balance at the ATM. But if you fast forward today, hold on one second. If you fast forward today, Mark Cuban is worth $4.2 billion. He owns the, the, uh, the Dallas Mavericks. He's a, an investor. But just think about it, right? Most people, you might be 30 years old. You might be 40 years old. You might be 50 years old or 60 years old. Guess what? It's never too late to accomplish your goals. See, most people look at their age and look at it as a way that, you know, it kind of pushes them back on their goal because they say to themselves, man, I'm only getting older. Time is running out. You know, only if I was young again. No, listen, it don't matter how old you are. The only thing that matters is that you keep that goal and that vision in the back of your head and just continue to push no matter what. Because what if he would have gave up at 27 years old? What if he would have quit? Who knows what he would still be doing today? And this is another artist of mine, and he's a young guy. I think he's 27 years old. And his story is phenomenal. He's been making music for over 10 years and made no money. Up until June of 2015, where he started earning money, you know, independently, being an independent artist, right? And his first check was 
you know, $626. But what he did different that year was being consistent. And this is what I'm going to talk about why being consistent is very important, right? So because he's independent, he don't have the machine behind him. The only way that he can be seen is by being independent, right? At that moment, right? So what he did was he decided to release one song every single week. So that's what, 52 songs a year, right? Most artists, they don't release that many music because if you're signed to a record label, they don't allow you to put out that many music, right? So because he's independent, he can do what he wants. So in June of 2015, he made $626. July, $1,100. August, $1,500. Then it was $3,000, $4,200, $4,600. 8,200, 16,000, 18,000, 20,000, 25,000, 70,000, and then he make 100,000. But guess what? Now he makes over $100,000 independently every single week. And he's only 27 years old. But he started at $6.26 five years ago, but he worked for a decade before he started making that type of money. See, most people just think about you know, how fast you want to become successful. No, listen, take the time to master your craft because the moment that you master whatever you're doing, the money is going to be there. You know, most people focus on, on the money instead of, like you said, the opportunity, being able to network with people that's already successful. And I look at AC in the same way. You know, it's not about becoming a millionaire my first year, my first five years, even my first 10 years. But if I have the opportunity to get around people that can teach me different things where instead of me just having money for now, I can be able to produce something that can take care of my family for generations to come. See, I have mentors that's great in real estate. I have mentors that's good in other businesses. And what I do is I just take everything together and I just continue to develop myself and learn the information so that I can pass it down to my team and everyone that's in my circle. Because if you're not growing, what are you really doing? It's about to be a new year. So you have to develop the mindset that, listen, no matter what I'm doing, as long as I'm consistent, I will be successful. It's all about consistency, right? So from there, think about this picture right here, right? We can agree back in the day, we used to watch like the National Geographic, the History Channel, and you used to see the helicopter with the cameraman, right? But we can agree, when was the last time you saw something recently when they had a, a person inside of a helicopter shooting the film or whatever the case may be, right? They don't, why? Because now they have drones. So just think about it, right? In 2010, that's what they needed, right? But fast forward 10 years later, in just 10 years, both the cameraman and the pilot lost their job. Because now you can have a drone. You can literally have a drone that does both. And it costs way less. And now you can do more things. You can shoot more things. And you can literally make more money without having to spend a lot of money. Because once you have the drone and the camera, now you can do whatever you want to do with it. But just think about if you had to pay for a camera person. You had to pay for to rent a helicopter out. And all of these different things. Just think about back in the days. It costs millions and millions of dollars to make movies. But today, you can make a movie from your iPhone. So just think about, listen, if you're not upgrading yourself, you will be left in the past. Just think about the people that thought job security was going to always be there. But then 2020 came around and a, a, a virus came around. And just think about how now, how many people are now dependent on the government just to make some money. And there's nothing wrong with that, but what if you would have prepared yourself years ago just in case something like this was to happen? Because if you don't know, history repeats itself. What we're dealing with right now, this happened in the 1901. This happened in the 40s, the 50s. Listen, every decade is the same thing, just a different name. So you got to prepare yourself today. Listen, say, listen, today in 2020, I'm going to make a decision to upgrade myself so that in the next five years, the next 10 years, if something again was to happen like this, my family will be protected. And it all starts with your mindset, right? Your mindset is everything. Everything is all about your mindset because your mindset determines your performance. But first, it, it, it also determines your attitude, right? So let's start off with attitude, right? Listen, if your attitude is not correct, your altitude is not going to be correct. Meaning that if your attitude is not together, you will never be successful at anything, right? Because either you're this person, right? The person that says, I can do everything, or are you the person that says, I can't do everything? 
See, the person that says, I can do everything, the mind starts to work and that affects their behavior, meaning that behavior, meaning that they're going to move to action. And if once you move to action, and you find that solution, you now acquire results. And once you have that results, guess what happened? You tend to work more because now you know for a fact that everything is working out the way it is supposed to work out because you had the right attitude. So everything starts off with your attitude. So going in 2020, one, just have the right mindset. Once you have the right mindset, I promise you, everything else will fall into place. People ask me all the time, what's the secret? Listen, there's no secret. All I do every single day is I try to feed my mindset to the point where that I believe that I can do anything that I want to do. I believe it in my mind because guess what? Why would I not believe it? Why not believe you can do anything? Why not believe you can be anything? Why not believe that you can have everything? Because first, it all starts right here before it comes into reality. If you say, I'm going to be a millionaire, guess what? Have the mindset of a millionaire. Think like a millionaire. Develop the habits like a millionaire. Say, let's say you're the person that, you know, you want to give back to the community. But guess what? It takes money to give back to the community. So whatever your goals and your vision is, you have to have it in the back of your mind every single day and feed yourself success stories of other people that you look at and stories of people that became successful and study that they also went through a lot. It was points in their life where they didn't believe in themselves. It was points in their life where their attitude wasn't right, their behavior wasn't right, and their action and all of that affected their results. So again, your mindset. 2021, it's all about mindset. Once you get your mind right, everything else will fall into place, right? From there, remove the word impossible and just say everything's possible. No matter what it is, it's possible. Listen, even if you can't see it right now, it don't matter what your situation is right now, believe that it is possible. Believe it. Just believe it in your heart. Believe it in your heart that it is possible. And it's a quick story that I remember uh, watching something and it was telling me the story about uh, how people in a hospital, right? For example, right? When you're in a hospital, right? And they did an experiment where they had people on, um, I think it was taking like medicine, right? But then they were saying, wow, the medicine is working, right? And then they gave them sugar tablets, right? And they gave them sugar tablets, but the person that was taking them, they didn't know that was sugar tablets. And they kept saying, wow, I feel great. I feel better. Like it's working, it's working. But the whole time it was their mindset. It wasn't the medicine, it was the mindset. So it don't matter what you're going through in life, you can change it by changing your mind. Because once you change your mindset, everything else for you will fall into place. See, I don't believe anything is impossible because looking at my life today now, who would have ever thought that at 20 years old, I can make a decision and say, you know what? I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to wake up when I'm finished sleeping. I had a business partner of mine call me this morning and it was like nine o'clock Houston time. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know you finished. You, I know you, you really um, don't be up this early. I know you normally wake up when you're finished sleeping because they know that. I have no alarm clock. I wake up when my body tells me to wake up. But naturally, I wake up early anyway because I like to get my day started early. So you got to have the mindset that, listen, anything is possible. You want to be a stay-at-home parent. Guess what? It's never too late. But it all starts off with your mindset, right? You got to ask yourself this question. Are you a boss or are you a leader? Because the only way you can really accomplish any type of time freedom or money freedom is by being a leader. Because guess what? Nobody likes a boss. Just think about it right now. Who in here really likes their boss or even having a boss? Nobody, right? So why would you want to be a boss to the people in your organization that you're leading? Guess what you got to be? You got to be the person in the front leading the way. You got to be the person in the front that's when you get to the top, guess what you do? You reach back and you pull your peoples up. You know, I was just talking to one of my business partners uh, yesterday, you know, and she was like, you know, I, I want to come to Houston and, 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 you know, hang out with you. But guess what? I got to get this RVP done in the next 30 days. And guess what I said? Get it done. But I'm, I'm still there to help you out. You need, you need me to do webinars. Whatever you need me to do, I'm there for you. Because guess what? As long as my leaders know that I'm there with them and I'm there to be in a fight with them and I'm not just sitting back telling them what to do, but I'm there to help them and I'm not doing everything for them, but I'm there as a support system. That's what people want in this business. All they need you to do is be that leader and be that person that's there to support them. Because guess what? People will quit on a person that's like a boss any day, but they will not quit on a person that lead them to where they're trying to get to go. 
People follow leaders. People don't follow a boss. That's why I told myself at 20 years old, I never want a boss. I don't care if you give me $100,000 a month, I do not want a boss. Because it's not about the money to me. It's about being able to do what I want to do whenever I want to do. See, I value having time freedom over having money. But I realized that in order to have time freedom, you got to have money. But more importantly, you got to make money by doing something that you really love to do. Because if you're just doing something just to make money, no matter what it is, you're going to quit when it gets hard. But you never quit on something that you truly love to do, right? Which for me is helping people, right? And if you have a million dollar dream, do not let someone with a $40,000 salary talk you out of it. It's so many times that people go talking to people about their million dollar dreams and they barely make $30,000, $20,000 a year. Why would you listen to someone that don't have or ha even have the lifestyle or anything about something that you want? Listen, if someone knew how to make a million dollars, they would already made it. If someone knew how to make a lot of money, they would already made it. And I'm gonna use my mom as example. My mom is not great at making a lot of money. My stepdad is. So for example, right? My mom, she's, a, she's amazing at cooking. Can't nobody cook better than my mom, right? So when it comes to food advice, listen, I'm all ears open. But the moment my mom opened her mouth and she talked to me about business or money or anything like that, I tell her, stop it. I tell her, I'm like, I'm gonna call you back. I'm gonna call you back. Because I'm not gonna listen to you talking to me about my million dollar dreams and you, you, you haven't even made a million dollars in your lifetime. In seven years of my life, I've made more money in my life than you made in your entire life. So why would I listen to you about making money if you don't know how to make money? I will listen to you about being a great mom. I listen to you about being a great wife. I listen to you about, about you know, cooking and things like that. But when it comes to making money, I wouldn't. And when it comes to my stepdad, right? He, he, he owns a painting business, right? He's been in business almost 20 years, right? I would listen to him about, you know, business, right? I would listen to him about credit and things like that. And, you know, because guess what? He proven me that it worked. But when it comes to other things, like having time freedom and things like that, or, you know, being able to wake up when I'm finished sleeping and things like that, we bump heads on that because he can't relate because every single day he got to get up and go to work, even though he have people working for him. Guess what? He still wake up at 7 a.m. in the morning and he goes to work. I remember we used to bump heads when I used to be sleeping in my mom's closet, that closet, and every morning before they went to work, they had to come into the closet and stand on top of the air mattress and go to work, and I'm sleeping, and I wake up when I'm finished sleeping, but they're going to work, and they mad because they got to wake up early to go to work, but I have a better lifestyle than they do. Because guess what? It's all about time freedom. It ain't about how much money you can make because guess what? You can go out there and make money a lot of ways, but which one is more important? Your time. When people are in the hospital, they don't think about how much money they have. They just wish that they had more time to do the things that they always wanted to do. See, when most people are in a hospital, the biggest thing for them is regret. I wish I would have started that business. I wish I would have did this. I wish I would have did that. And guess what? Regret weigh a ton. See, I'm not going to live my life in regret. I'm going to do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it, however I want to do it, every single day. I would never live my life in regret. I'm never going to say, I wish I would have started that business. No, I'm going to start that business. Or I wish I would have traveled here. I travel more than anybody in my family. My family look at me crazy. Why would you, why would you drive across the country? Do you know how many people wish they had the opportunity to drive across the, the whole entire United States multiple times? Most people are stuck into this little city. When it's a whole bigger world out here. People say all the time, why are you always traveling? Why would you not want to travel? Why would you not want to experience the world? See, I heard a quote that said, a bird that's in a cage think flying is a sickness. Let me repeat that to you. I heard a quote that said, a bird in a cage thinks flying is a sickness. And so many people are stuck in this little cage and they don't understand that, listen, it's a lot out here in the world, but you got to go get it. Nobody's going to bring it to your doorstep. You got to go out there and get it. You got to go out there and say, listen, this is my dream. This is my goal. This is my vision. And nobody will talk me out of achieving it. Not even myself. Because sometimes it's not even the outside people. It's sometimes it's yourself. The conversation that you're having when you're by yourself in the room. The thoughts that you have in the back of your mind saying, I can't do this. No, you can do it. I don't care if you have $5 in your bank account. That can turn into $500,000 one day, $5 million. Listen, it all, it's all possible. But what is your goals? What is your vision? Uh, I think I have mine on me. I actually just started another one. It's a new book. It's a new, uh, it's a new book. 
But I, you know, my handwriting is chicken scratch. I started this like two days ago, but this is goals. Everything that I want to accomplish, this is goals. I mean, it's, it don't matter what I want to do. I can show you journals on journals on, on journals. You know, I have, this is another new journal. It's just journals on journals. Like everything that I want to accomplish, I, I write it down. It's no secret. It's no secret. The secret is that you actually got to do the work and it all starts on putting it on paper. If you don't have your goals written down, it's not going to happen. You have to write it down. I don't care how ugly your handwriting is. I have the ugliest handwriting in the world. I can only read my own handwriting, but I can promise you that everything that I put on paper, it, it happens. And if it haven't happened yet, it will happen. I'll share one of my goals with you guys. My goal for 2021 is to become a DECA millionaire, meaning that my goal is to earn $10 million, $10 million net. And the reason why I have a goal so big, because guess what? If I shoot for 10 million, what if I just made one? But if I shoot for 1 million, I might only make who knows what. See, you got to think big. You got to think big. And that's not just my goal for AC. That's just my goal in general. I don't care about how it's going to happen. I just have the goal written down and I read over it every single day and I speak it every single day. I look at my goals and I read it and say, I am. I am not happy and grateful now that. I am not happy and grateful now that. Because guess what? You got to have the feeling already that you have it. You got to feel as though you're already happy and you're already grateful for having and wanting the things that you want. Why would you not want to be that way? Why not? Why not? Because guess what? That's the first goal. You look at my screen save, I change it again. It says, my income is consistently increasing. Money flows easily into my life. There's always more than enough. And guess what happened? Money always happened to come to me in some different ways. It don't matter where. Somebody might need help with this or help with that. Guess what? People now pay me for information because I've worked so hard on myself now that people are now paying me just to hear me share information with them. And it's not just ACN, it's about life in general, because I study a lot of things. I don't just study one thing. That's why to me, ACN was easy because it's all your mindset. If you think it's easy, it's going to be easy. All we do is deal with people. I know how to deal with people. And when you're dealing with people, guess what? Everybody is different. So if you just let people be people and you just continue to go through the numbers, you will find the right people that's going to help you to get to where you need to go. And elevation requires separation. And a lot of people don't like to have this conversation. Listen, in order to elevate, you got to separate. I had to separate from everything that's not helping me, you know, to the point where, you know, I had people that, that was close to me that said, you know, you're lonely. You don't have no friends and things like that. I'm like, I like my life the way it is. And the reason why, because the less people that I have pulling me and tugging from me and draining me, the less successful I will become. But the moment that I cut off all of the leeches from me is the moment where I started to elevate in my all areas of my life on a whole different level. Like I even got a new number. I, I had a, the same number for at least 50, since I was 15 years old. So like 13 years. And I said, you know what? I'm getting a new number. The people that have my number, or the people that I want to have my number. So I text everyone that I need to have my number and everybody else, hey, holler at me on Instagram. Holler at me on Facebook. And if I want you to have my number, I'll give you my number. Why? Because I'm protecting my energy. I know that, listen, in order for me to elevate to where I'm trying to go, I got to separate from the people that's not trying to go there. I have close friends that I love you like a brother, but guess what? I can't hang with you every single day. I can't talk to you every single day because if you're not pouring into me, you're pulling from me. And I listen, I already involved in a business where I have to talk to people and things like that. And for so many years, everyone was just draining from me, but rarely a lot of people was pouring back into me. So I said, you know what? I got to cut off the leeches. I only want to operate with people that can help me get to where I need to go and I can help them get to where they need to go. I'm all about information. All about people that can help me with information. I don't need you to do the work for me, but if you have information that I can use, guess what? I also have information that you can use. So it's a win-win situation. I'm only dealing with things that's beneficial for both parties. If it's just a one-way street, no, I'm not going down that street. It got to be a two-way street. Because if first you don't succeed, try doing what the coach showed you to do the first time. The first time, so many people want to want to learn the hard way. Listen, if I'm telling you the things what not to do, why would you want to learn it on your own? Why would you want to learn it on your own? And I learned it the hard way when I, you know, my stepdad always told me, 
you gonna mess, don't mess your credit up. Don't mess your credit up. I already helped you set, set you up to get right at 17 years old. And he did, he set me up right. And guess what happened? I didn't listen. We used to bump heads like, man, I'm not worried about credit. I got cash and then boom, look what happened. And then still to this day, he always tell me, see, see what I told you, if you would have listened the first time. So guess what? Don't be like me. Don't learn the hard way. I learned the hard way because I used to tell myself, man, it don't matter. I learned the hard way. I get over it. But guess what? It's some things that I wish that I would have listened to my coach. See, I have different coaches for different parts of my life. So you had different coaches also. Listen to the people, like you said, that they're trying to help you, not people that's just trying to hold you back, right? Stop getting distracted by things that have nothing to do with your goals. Going to 2021, anything that's a distraction, get rid of it. People, it don't matter what, get rid of it. Get rid of all distractions, and I promise you, you will get to where you're trying to go, but you got to remove all distractions and focus on your goals. What are your goals, right? Your goals don't care how you feel also. So for the people that said, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't feel like doing it, listen. Then guess what? You're not gonna come. Your goals don't care how you feel. Remove your feelings. Your feelings will only keep you stuck where you're at. Remove your feelings. I had to remove my feelings when I got involved in business because I understand that my feelings will keep me where I'm at. Oh, because I don't feel like doing this today. Or oh, I don't feel like doing that. Or oh, I don't feel like, listen, no matter what you feel like, get up and do it anyway. Your feelings are not going to pay your bills. Your feelings are not going to take care of your family. Your feelings, your feelings, your feelings. Nobody cares about your feelings. Your feelings are only hurting you, not nobody else. So get rid of your feelings. The only feelings you should have is a feel to do something that's going to be better to help your life in the long run. 20% of the people do 80% of the production. So I spent 80% of my time with the 20%ers. I used to believe so much in people that I tried to change the 80%ers that made them productive, but I learned you can't change people. Let's what, the 80-20 rule, you can't change them. 80% of the people in your organization will do 20% of the production. Think about it, right? You have a team of 100 people, right? 80% of your team is only gonna do 20% of the work. So that means only what? 20 people out of 100 people will be the people that actually do something. So if you look at your numbers, you look at your business, right? If you said, I only got 10 people, right? Only two people. But from there, look at the ratio. See, I'd rather have a thousand people in my organization and have that 80 20 rule and just think about it, right? You only need two people to go RVP. I mean, two people, two RVPs to go SVP. It's easy to build an RD, but to find like an RVP, a solid person, listen, get a thousand reps. Cause guess what happened? That's my business. I'm looking at my business today now. Like I literally have over a thousand business partner and two of those people literally do 20% of the work, but they have a big part of my organization and now they're about to be RVPs and they run their own businesses. Do you understand that the type of SVP that I'm going to become is going to be one of the best SVP because it's not just built on, you know, whatever, whatever. It's built on a real system of people that runs their own business. That's a real business. Listen, if you got to always be there to do everything, you don't have a business, you have a job. The goal is to have independent business partners that run their own businesses. It's all about teaching them the game. Listen, my business partners now, they run their own show. They got their own clothing lines. They got their own team brand. And guess what? I have my own also, but I push theirs because I want them to have ownership because the more people feel as though they own something, they want control of it. And when they control it, guess what happens? You no longer have to be there to do everything. That's the ultimate goal. You want to develop leaders that become independent from you. They're running their own show and you're there to help them become independent. Don't be that leader that don't want to see a person fly past you. I tell them all the time, listen, y'all better than me. Y'all are better than me. My goal is to find people that's better than me. How many people will actually be able to tell their team that y'all are better than me? Listen, you got to put that in the head so that they feel as though they're better than you. So they go out there and they work hard enough to really prove to themselves that they're really better than you. Because now that's how they feel, that they're better than me. You want your people to be better than you. Because if they're not better than you, then you, are, you as a leader have not been doing a great job. If your people are still stuck in the same mindset, the same way, the same thinking, the same everything that they, that they was when they first got in, 
And I'm not talking about a brand new person. I'm talking about people that have been down with you for years. If they're still the same people and they really want it, that means you as a leader have not helped them enough to really get to where they need to go by changing their mind first. Because all I do is I point to my people and I change their mindset first. And when I change their mindset, everything else about them changes. But it first starts in your mindset. I don't give people money. I give people opportunity. I share information, right? And you can't help nobody unless you help yourself. I couldn't help nobody until I helped myself. Until I picked up a book, until I started reading, until I started watching every single day, I'm just learning, 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 learning nonstop. I learn something new every single day so that way I can help other people. I can't help people if I don't help myself, right? So for you on this call, you can't help nobody until you start helping yourself. Put yourself first 2021 and watch everything changes. Put yourself first. Put yourself first and watch how, hey, listen, Putting yourself first, it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with it. People say it's selfish. No, it's not. Self-preservation is the first law of nature, right? You got to take care of you before you take care of everybody else. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't help nobody. And most people I know, they have big, giant egos and a small bank account. And those are the people that I do not associate myself with. I'd rather be around people that have, you know, no ego, at all, because guess what? All ego means is edging God out, meaning that you believe that you can just, you just got a nasty attitude. Just think about, do you want to be around somebody that's got a nasty ego? No, you don't. Don't be that person with a big ego and no money. Because guess what? If you're going to at least have a big ego, have something to back it up. So many people, you might, hey, I got a business for you, but they broke and they need it more than you to sleep on the couch. And they got a big ego about what you're doing. They trying to talk you out of what you're doing and they got nothing going on. Don't, don't, don't be like that person. Don't even talk to that type of person. Say, all right, cool, man. I'll talk to you again. Don't hang around those people. Say, I want to hang around people that's like-minded, right? And just think about this, right? Imagine playing Monopoly and never buying anything that could produce more money, just collecting $200 for pass and go. And that's how most people live their life. They just go to work, get paid, go to work, get paid, go to work, get paid, and never invest in anything that can make them more money. See, I look at ACM, right, as an investment for me because... I put my time, my energy, and my money to something that seven years later is still paying me. Most people spent that same amount of money on shoes. Think about how many people just went broke for Christmas and they're going to start the new year off the same way they started the new year off the past 10, 20 years. So I, listen, I have nothing against the holiday season and things like that, but guess what I told my family years ago? I'm not going broke for nobody. I'm not putting myself in a financial bind to make somebody happy, no. Because I'd rather share information with you that can change your life forever than buy you a bunch of gifts that you won't use for a week or two. Why not take that same money, invest in a course, invest in the LLC, start a business. See, years ago, I stopped buying people gifts. I stopped doing that, I, not even my son. I don't even buy my son gifts. His grandparents do because I'm going to teach him that. Listen, when you get about five, you get in your first business. You're going to start selling lemonades. I'm training you to be an entrepreneur. I'm not training you to think, you know, every time something come around, I got to buy you gifts because guess what I'm doing? I'm teaching him bad habits that's been passed down for generations. And if I don't do anything different, who will? It starts, it starts, it, listen, I watch my siblings buy my nephew and them anything that they want, right? They go broke, they work two jobs, whatever they got to do, just buy them a whole bunch of materialistic things, but they never have time to sit down and spend real quality time with them. Which one would you rather do? Would you rather spend more quality time developing and building up the next generation? Or would you rather just buy them a bunch of things to impress everybody else? And in real life, you're struggling to keep up because you're always consistently in debt because you're a slave to materialistic things. So for Christmas, guess what I'm going to start buying people starting 2021? Books. I'm going to get you a book. I'm going to get you a book, a book, and some more books. And if you don't want it, I'll give it to somebody else. I'm, I'm sharing information. It's about information for me. I'm all about learning and passing the game. You know, soon what I'm doing right now, I believe one day people will pay me six figures to share the same information that I'm sharing for free. This is all practice for me. But how big do you believe in yourself? I believe one day they'll pay me millions of dollars just to hear me speak one day. But guess what? 
You got to work on yourself now. You got to start off speaking to one person, two people, three people, four people, a hundred people. You know, it starts small and go big, but it's all about your belief level. You got to have big belief in yourself. It's not about, you know, being cocky or anything like that. It's just belief. Because guess what? If nobody believe in you, why would you believe in you? If you don't even believe in yourself, why would anybody else believe in you? And it's all the small, the small habits, right? How do you spend your morning? Who you hang around? How you talk to yourself? What are you reading? Who are you listening to? What you watch? Who you share energy with? All of these small habits have a big impact on your life. All of these small habits. See, it's all about the small things that matters the most. When I wake up in the morning, I don't even eat until after 12 o'clock. I drink water or I drink tea. I don't hang around a bunch of people because guess what? Most people don't got nothing to offer. I only hang with people that have th things to offer, right? How I talk to myself, I believe that I can do anything and have anything and be anything in life. What do I read? I read different books every day. Every day I'm learning something new, right? Who do I listen to? People that have what I want. What do I watch? I do not watch TV. I watch YouTube. Who do you share your energy with? I don't share my energy with a lot of people, but the people I do share my energy with, I have to make sure that it's being reciprocated and that they can teach me something else because I'm not just gonna be sharing my energy with people that can't help me out when I need the help. What's the point of that? It's no point, right? So all of those little things right there will be a change to your life, right? And I think this is, I think we have one more, right? So let me end it with this right here, right? You went to 10 job interviews, right? And determined that you needed a job, right? and you didn't stop until you was employed, right? So that's determination, right? You started one business and it didn't work out as fast as enough for you and you said, this isn't for me. Imagine if you had the same sense of urgency in yourself as you did on finding a job as it took to build your own business. Because this right here, I can end it with this. This is most people every day. They are so determined, I gotta get a job, I gotta get a job. But you talk to them about starting a business, they can tell you every reason why it won't work but they'll do whatever it takes to go to job, the job, the job, the job, and they don't like what they do, and they spend their whole entire life just working a job, doing something that they don't like to do to pay bills, and it's just like, you never really live. You never truly really live life. Because life is not, it's not just about working a job to pay bills. Life is about doing what you wanna do whenever you wanna do it, and doing it because you want to do it, not because you have to do it. See, that's what it's about to me. I tell people all the time, making money is not an issue. I can make money doing anything. But I only do what I love because if I don't love it, guess what's going to happen? I'm not going to want to do it. I don't care how much money you can make. I just told you that you can say, hey, I have a six figure job for you, you know, tomorrow and, I'll and I can have zero dollars in my account. And I won't even I tell you I'm good. I don't need it. See, most people won't they won't do it right. They wouldn't do it. They would say, no, I, I don't care, man. No, because. I'm not going to go against my beliefs and what I truly believe in myself and my family because I'm not just thinking about me. I'm thinking about generations for now. I can't leave that for generations for now. And my time is very precious, right? So all of the time that I have right now, it takes on building something that I can leave for generations, which is information, which is businesses, trust, and a whole lot of other things that we can talk about that most people don't want to talk about. When we start talking about, you know, things that really, that really matter in life, most people don't want to entertain it. But they can talk about reality shows, the president, what's going on in the White House. I don't care what's going on in the White House. What's going on in your house? I don't watch TV. I don't care what's going on in CNN, Fox News, none of that. They all block from my social media. It's to the point where I block these news channels because I don't care about what's going on in the news. I only care about what's going on in my home because that's the only thing that I can control. I only focus on things that I can control. I do not focus on things that's out of my control. And when you start focusing on things that you can control, everything else don't even matter anymore. So hopefully that I was able to share something with you guys today that was able to end the year off on a good track so that you can start the year off with a great mindset. Start the year off new with a new refreshed mindset. Start writing your goals down. Start reading your goals every single day. Start having big goals and big vision and stop thinking small. 2020 was the year to stop thinking small. Believe you can be an SVP in the next 12 months. Why can't you be an SVP? Who says you can't do it? Who said you can't have and do and be anything that you want to be? Nobody, nobody has that limit but you. So go out there and make it happen and believe in yourself. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you need to say is, listen, I believe in myself. 
Just say it to yourself every single day and watch how your day changes. So I want to thank you guys for being on here today. Hopefully, you know, I shared something that can help you guys out. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the near future. So thank you guys again. I'll pass the call back to Mr. Thomas. Sir, don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. You know, Chris King put in the chat. And then I, here it is here. We're going to change your hat. We need to, uh-oh, uh-oh. We need to change your hat, because I tell you what, you are the king of this. You did a bad tap. Come on, y'all, let's show him some love. Let's show him some love. Let's show some love. My God, this, man, we're going to change his hat to a crown. We're going to change that hat to a crown. My God, if you guys can get some out, we're going, Mr. Mr. Bree Clemens, we're going to keep this short down the road uh, a little bit again, because this was so powerful. And, and this is what he's shooting for y'all in 2021. There is the SVP ring box. There it is there. That's what he's going to get next year, 2021. He's closing in on it. He's got two people hit to go RVP. That has put him so close to SVP. I'm telling you, he's going to get it. My question is, what's your goal for 2021? I'm, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to, he said everything that's needed to be said. And if I were you, I'd be smart about it. He said he goes to YouTube. I would go to Desti International, our YouTube, and look at all the great speakers we've had, especially this one. I would, if I were you, I'm just saying, I would go back and listen to this least once or twice to get the fullness of what you just heard today. Because that was powerful. That was powerful. Hey, listen, Mr. Shaquille Cooper, I want to thank you because my God, you have grown tremendously. You, for 27 years old, you got the wisdom of a 60 year old and beyond, sir, with that accolade and how you take everything. And I love, my friend, how you break it down to make it so palatable that if a person doesn't take this information, I ain't gonna say it because it's holiday, but I'm gonna say this. You, uh, look at it, we got sweat, I'm gonna say you got a sweater, different colors. It's just a mindset, folks. I can't say nothing. I'm not gonna talk over him today. I tell you what, I would look at this again and again, and anybody on your team that didn't get it, when it comes back on the channel, if I were you, I'd download it and send it to everybody who's a leader in your business. I, I do that all the time, it's very powerful. <clears throat> very powerful, very powerful. Thank you, Ms. Pat Robinson. I don't know young people, old people, middle-class people, old people, short people. Slim people, big people, what are, everybody to hear this. So I want to thank you, Mr. Shaquille Cooper. Take care of that handsome son of yours that always got a smile on his face. And I want to say Happy New Year to you, sir. Folks, the you guys that are on here, remember, uh, not, nothing's tonight. Tomorrow morning, we'll be back one more, one more. Tomorrow night, tomorrow morning will be our last one for 2020. And we'll start off January the 4th, Monday, with, with uh, 3.0, Mr. Tasha Ismail will kick us off, and then Mr. Julian Lewis will be with us live on the Tuesday, uh, Tuesday. Mr. Dwight William Wednesday, my friend Jordan Allen will be with us Thursday, the author of Beach Money. Oh, I got his book on my desk. Author of Beach Money and Better Than Beach Money, my dear friend, flying around in his helicopter, hanging out with uh, Richard Branson will be with us on Thursday. And then on Friday, we're gonna play a recording. Hold on, I think it's a recording on Friday. We are playing on uh, January the 8th, a recording, oh, of Mr. Shaquille Cooper. that he did December 23rd. We're going to play that one again. That was powerful. See, Mr. C Mr. Cooper, we got you in our archive, sir. You're so powerful. We're going to be playing that on the 8th. And then on the, uh, the eight, then that evening, Al's happy hour first for the year. We're going to kick it off with a few things. And then Saturday, I'm going to be teaching and preaching. And my topic is going to be, oh, my goodness, I've been working on this, DNA of an SVP DMO. Lord have mercy. Bring a seatbelt. If you don't have a seatbelt, uh, go order one. I got mine right here. So we're going we're gonna to take off with that on Saturday. And then on Sundays, the Kings will come some great information on the product services that we have in ACN. That, my friend, is our end of the year, and we're going to start the year off with momentum. Those that are keep working, get that momentum, keep going, because this is how I built mine through. I didn't stop. This year, I took off three days, like I always told you, and I'm taking off another three, but I'm already in 2020 because my year is December 20th. With that, God bless you, Mr. Shaquille Cooper. Can we show him love one more time? One more